Now, as we're approaching Christmas 2020, and this is the final video before Christmas, I thought I'd look at a new feature for you. This is called the Archive Series, and this is video number one of that series. Before I tell you all about the Archive Series and why it's just a little bit different from the other videos on this channel, you're welcome to skip this intro and go straight to the review. Just look out for the timestamp at the top of the description, or failing that, you might want to fast forward to the time printed at the bottom of the screen now. For everyone else, well, the archive reviews are just a little bit different from what you're normally used to seeing at the moment in the audiophile channel. Now, why is that? Well, my friends, the reviews in the archive section of this channel are basically video versions of my website reviews. Now, you might cry foul at this. Money for old rope, you may cry. The man is a lazy so-and-so. I can hear the hearkened exclamation. But honest, Gov, these reviews are not really my idea. They are the result of public demand. On my website right now, there are well over 500 reviews just sitting there, ready to be, well, read. And for many of you, I know because you've told me that's the problem right there. You see, I've taken time out of my day to answer a host of questions in the comments section of all my videos, as you can see for yourself. Often I get the old, what do you think of product X then type question. And I also often reply with, actually, I've done a review on my website of that very product. Here's a link. And many have quickly shot back with something along the lines of, well, I prefer YouTube actually. I'd rather see it than read it, which is fair enough. And why is it fair enough? Because talking books, that's why. Talking books as a genre is the YouTube of the literary world. I have old books on tape, on CD, and now Audible has a bunch in the form of digital downloads. Now, personally, I'm a big fan of books and reading in general, and my home is creaking at the seams with the things, but many of us are not that keen. We'd rather listen to someone reading aloud in our cars, in our kitchens while we do the dishes, or in the garden while we pursue pesky slugs to a grisly and sticky death. So that's the issue I face here. I've got over 500 reviews sitting, smouldering slightly on my website. And while I have plenty of website visitors who do read them, there's not that many viewers on YouTube who fancy it, to be honest. So part of the reason for these archives is this. I want to bring those website reviews to this YouTube channel, dear reader. Uh, viewer. Now there's pros and cons in doing this, of course. Firstly, these are older reviews, so the chance of me actually having the item in question here to show you in my now famed and legendary closer look section has long gone. They've been shipped back to their original owners. In fact, these reviews were generally sorted out before this YouTube channel even existed, or couldn't be processed in time when it did exist. Yet, they deserve a showing here, I reckon. So these archive reviews will not feature a closer look section. Now, on the plus side, it does allow me to update the reviews in terms of any feature tweaks or price changes and the like. The videos themselves should be pretty straight to the point and relatively short, which some of you will like, I'm sure, especially those poor souls who've been plowing through my recent buyer's guides. Finally, and this gets back to my point about answering questions in the comments section, it gives you a resource, and more than that, a searchable resource. So the more reviews I can pump out to YouTube on this channel, the more knowledge you have to draw upon. Reviews you don't have to read either. And also reviews of equipment that might not be that common on YouTube. So let me know your thoughts on the nature of the concept and we'll see how this goes. And so let's get to archive review number one. This first review is a box from France. The company is called Advance from France and it's called the UX1. It's a sort of multimedia all-in-one jobby basically. It's compact and it's quite stylish in its looks. It's sort of cube-ish and originally, when I did the first review of this particular product, it was priced at 999 Well, now that price 
has fallen a bit. So I've seen this particular product available for $8.99. Now this product looks to attract the lifestyle user with its relatively minimal yet rather chic frontage. It's only when you mosey around the back does all hell break loose in terms of the busy nature of its feature set. A bit like a Hollywood film set then. Similarly, I hoped it wouldn't fall over if I pushed it too hard. Built around the AK4490 DAC, which is based on AKM's Velvet Sound architecture, the core chip delivers 32-bit 768kHz PCM and 11.2MHz DSD. This one's compatible with AirPlay and DLNA and arrives, as these things often do, with its own app. And as ever, that app can be downloaded from the usual iOS and Android sources. The UX1 includes a computer-like Bluetooth direct digital port for connecting the XFTB01 digital Bluetooth receiver dongle. A bit of a mouthful. This particular receiver incorporates aptX. Bluetooth dongles are odd accessories in this day and age, but it does bode well in terms of lowering noise because it keeps the circuitry outside of the main chassis. In terms of other knobs and buttons and ports, well at the front you'll see a source volume multifunction knob. Pressed in, the knob becomes a button that handles short and long presses for commands such as factory reset, variable or fixed volume, software updates, and network setup. There's also CD transport buttons, standby power switch, and a window display with active source lights surrounding it. Apart from the power socket and rocker power switch, there's a DAB FM radio antenna port, Alexa voice control socket, that Bluetooth port I mentioned, an aerial, two USB ports, A's and B's. The A is also used to update the software, but this is a dealer installation only, I hasten to add. You get internet, you get three optical ports, plus a coax and optical output. You also get balanced and unbalanced analog outs. Whew, so that's quite a list, as you can see. Spanning 130 millimeters by 230, by 310 millimeters and weighing in at 3.8 kilograms, this is one busy box of goodies, jam packed full of features. And you know what? That sort of worries me a little bit. There is no such thing as a free lunch, even in hi fi. So, lots of features packed into a small compact chassis does risk component noise traveling from one internal area of the UX1 to another. But could the UX1 pull off the sonic trick? of keeping the noise low. Now faced with a gamut of features to choose from, I decided to look at that Bluetooth dongle first up. When plugged in, the dongle lit up, showing that it was ready and waiting. Now the lights emanating from this dongle shined brighter than anything I've ever seen from the emergency services. And I was particularly glad that this dongle was situated at the back of the chassis and not at the front, because if it was at the front, I would have been instantly blinded. I then switched on the Bluetooth option on my phone. Pairing was quick and painless. Selecting Bluetooth on the UX1 source selector, I played that miniature Australian, Kylie Minogue, and the song All The Lovers. Now one of the best Bluetooth performances I've ever heard comes from the Lima product, the Quasar, which is also an all-in-one product. Now, the Lima Quasar is three times the price of the UX1, so I wasn't expecting miracles from the UX1, but I did wonder how it would shape up. The UX1's Bluetooth audio proved to be thin and anemic, with a hard upper mid-range edge. On the plus side, the soundstage was pleasantly wide, with a good instrumental separation. It was easy to recognise individual instruments, as well as backing vocals. The acoustic guitar, for example, was especially insightful. Part of the reason for the Strident's performance was the nature of the lossy source file. But I suspect the cheek-by-jowl nature of the guts of the UX1 mentioned above didn't really help. And overall, I would say it's certainly listenable for any UX1 owner. I did try other better quality files from the likes of 
Miles Davis and James Taylor, and they did obviously improve the situation, but I wouldn't say the performance was amazing. I think if you compare the UX1's Bluetooth performance with other products in its price range, I would say Bluetooth output on this machine was decent. Not amazing, decent. I then removed the Bluetooth dongle from the rear of the chassis from this point to minimize electronic noise spreading to other areas of the UX1, as well as possible damage to my retina. And I reached for another Lima product, the Elements CD player, to compare to the UX1's built-in CD player. Now, the Elements is a standalone CD player, so should really wipe the floor with the UX1's built-in model. Even so, I wasn't expecting the UX1 to perform miracles here, but I just wondered how far it would go, how good would be the performance relative to a specialist integrated CD model. The UX1's CD section uses a rather thin and weedy CD tray that springs out of the chassis like a rubber snake from a joke can. The sight of a tray is in itself rather intriguing because many products of the UX1's ilk tends to use one of those grab slots. The UX1's CD tray is rather fragile looking. So once the CD tray is out, if you press upon the US1's CD tray and then you let go, it kind of boings back into place. This combined visual and oral effect doesn't infuse confidence, I have to say. Nevertheless, I gave the CD section a listen. I played Bing Crosby's Bing with a Beat, featuring Bob Scobie's Frisco Jazz Band and the track let a smile be your umbrella. Again, noise seemed to be the issue here, as I had to kick back the gain on my preamp. Down it went by six or seven clicks. Sonically, looking at the overall tonal balance, the upper mids from the CD play were spotlighted by rather edgy upper mids. Hence, trumpet crescendos could be a little challenging to the ears, while the Crosby baritone could have offered more in terms of texture and nuance. That said, there was still plenty of detail on offer here, with the sax solo in particular being full of information. Percussion was notable for its crisp response, bass was enhanced by its impact and punch with an admirable precision to boot. The soundstage was also quite large indeed. It had a rather landscape effect which spanned the entire room, which was very nice indeed. And as an aside, I was very happy with the performance of the remote. Even with obstructions between me and the UX1, the remote was able to bounce its signal through to the UX1 and the response was instant. Speaking of remotes, I then installed the app called the Advanced Playstream, which was easy to find on the App Store. That quickly connected to my Wi-Fi system and the app searched for compatible hardware and then following the on-screen prompts, the final installation task was fairly straightforward. Once loaded, I had the option to play a range of services over the UX1. These included Spotify, Tidal, VTuner, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Cobas, Deezer and Napster. I played a range of music via Spotify, VTuner and TuneIn and was, well, a little bit disappointed in terms of feedback. What I mean by that is I couldn't really get any techie information. For example, what resolution was the stream actually performing at. As for music quality, I was relatively happy with the overall performance here. The music was obviously compressed and restricted in terms of dynamic range, but listening fatigue was not an issue, while the range of music on offer was expansive to say the least. I then plugged into the rear of the UX1 a USB stick full of 24-bit 96K files containing a slice of jazz from Sonny Rollins. In general terms, the music was presented in a balanced and neutral fashion, which says a lot for the stable nature of the USB source. Yes, there was some slight edge to the mid-range here, which again reflected the nature of the product, but there was much to like from this track, including a respectable bass performance. Now, using these USB files, some of the UX1's competing products 
can lose the bass a bit. Sometimes the upright bass on this music can go AWOL. The UX1 didn't really do that and retained a good tonal balance overall, while piano was presented well in terms of detail. Percussion, which was subtle in nature and delicate in application, was well tracked. You never felt shortchanged in its performance. The external nature of the USB stick source was, I felt, a major assistance in terms of reducing overall noise. I could say the same about the jazz vocal piece A Nightingale Sang in Berkeley Square from Carol Kidd at 16 bit 44.1, which, although suffering a tad from dynamic range restriction, offered, again, a good tonal balance that proved a pleasant listen. The broad soundstage allowed room for each instrumentalist to manoeuvre and play. The bass was powerful, but not overbearing, while Kid's performance was lucid and informative. Again, the remote worked well here. The USB music output was controlled efficiently as it utilised the same buttons used to control CD play. Finally, I plugged an external digital player from Astle & Kern into the rear-mounted optical port and played a slice of Dire Straits Money For Nothing at 24-bit 88.2. Again, the improvement of the external source did help to open out the mid-range. From the UX1, this was the first time I'd heard plenty of air and space in the soundstage of the musical playback. The Astle and Kern's inherent quality, I think, was the reason for that. Forceful and punchy, the track was epic in tone and grand in scale, with a relatively relaxed demeanour. So what do I think of the UX1 multimedia player from Advance. The compact UX1 is a trade-off that packs a lot of technology into a small chassis, but with a sonic compromise as noted above. That said, the UX1 provides tremendous value for money that will make it an attractive proposition for many music fans. And all the features work pretty well and efficiently too. In fact, the UX1 provides a host of digital options that, for some, will be all they will ever need. So that's my first archive review done and dusted, and this will be the final review, not just before Christmas 2020, but for this year. I will be publishing other archive reviews during early January, because I'd just like to get this section up and running and rolling, and to give the archive section a little bit of a presence going forward. So there'll be more to come. For now, though, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. I hope Father Christmas pays you a particularly pleasant visit, as long as you've been good and, well, if you're a member of this channel, I, I take that as read, and I hope you have a lovely time. I also wish you, if I don't see you before, I also wish you a very, very happy new year, and a particularly peaceful and safe new year as well. I hope to have your company in the next video, which will be another archive review. So please take care of yourself, and until we meet again, bye-bye for now.